Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. If you are standing up right now, you might want to sit down for this one. Uh, on July 18th, I received an email message from some person who wants to remain anonymous, and uh, I will honor that. Uh, but I, this person provided a document to me and, uh, and told me I could do what I want with it. So I'm going to share it with uh, my listeners, and uh, here we go. Background. During a 36-year career as an electronic engineer, I performed research and development for NASA on the shuttle, the National Reconnaissance Office, and CIA satellites, a Department of Defense slash Air Force Division formerly called the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization, now the uh, Missile Defense Agency, for the SDI program, and ultimately worked with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency on Robotics. Some of these assignments were off books or black projects, which remain classified. And although I'm now retired, for obvious reasons, I prefer not to disclose my identity here. Suffice to say that I have never been involved in attempting to reverse engineer an alien spacecraft, and I never had much interest in the UAP phenomena until something I saw in 1997. I won't go into that now beyond saying that it motivated me to begin, to begin looking into the UAP issue. I want to begin with a brief summary of what may seem like a bit of ancient history, but please bear with me while I lay the foundation for my ultimate conclusions. Alien Presence 101. It's quite obvious that vehicles or devices employing advanced technology far beyond our present level are operating in our skies and oceans. We have thousands of reports of this going back at least to the 1940s. Next, sometime in the 1960s, cattle mutilations also began to be reported. The characteristics of these mutilations have been consistent across a large number of cases and do not appear to correspond to any sort of natural causes. The cases now number in the thousands, and there is substantial evidence to connect them with the presence of UAPs in the area. Forensics, forensic analysis of the cadavers provides important clues as to the motivation for the mutilations. In case after case, the same body parts are removed with surgical precision, the blood is drained, and the ribs are broken as if dropped from height. In addition, a substantial number of people go missing every year under circumstances which are very difficult to explain. They may meet the same fate as the cattle, but in these cases the bodies are never found, so the cause remains unconfirmed. Another troubling phenomena which began to be reported in the 1960s was the rand random abduction of human beings by the greys, apparently for the purpose of collecting genetic materials, Victims often report being paralyzed and unable to resist. Finally, although far less common, reports of UAPs disabling nuclear missiles also began to surface, the 1967 incident at Malmstrom being a good example. All this in conjunction with an aggressive attempt to conceal UAP-related information by the U.S. military leads me to certain very disturbing conclusions and evaluation. In general, these actions seem to resemble the behavior of a society of advanced insects who possess the capacity of interstellar, interstellar travel. It's not really that strange. In fact, it's often been said that of all creatures, insects are by far the most capable survivors. If life exists anywhere in the galaxy, the odds of them being insects are fairly high. Insects typically Insects typically subsist on liquids such as blood, which they often obtain after paralyzing the victims. Blood is very high in protein and provides excellent nutrition for those adapted to feeding on it. We may note that the easiest way to extract blood from a mammal, such as a cow, is to punch through the eye socket into the brain to reach a main artery. This corresponds with the injuries repeatedly observed in cattle mutilations. Cattle, cattle are very plentiful and easily accessible. Their global population is over 1 billion, and a typical cow has 18 quarts of blood compared to only 4 for humans. While this makes them the most convenient source, we should remember that their blood is nearly identical to ours. In fact, the FDA actually approved its use for medical transfusions in 1991. Within an insect society, certain institutions would be quite natural. For example, the existence of a worker class such as the greys who seem to perform the more mundane tasks outside of the hive just as worker bees gather pollen. 
the large eyes are also typical of insects, evolved by living in hives or underground tunnels. Regarding those humans being abducted for genetic experiments, if the greys were themselves products of genetic engineering, it would be logical to upgrade them by incorporating any DNA which would make them more efficient workers in the particular gravity and atmosphere of a planet being colonized. This could explain the collection of human genetic material. Exploration has the goal of finding something of value to the explorer. I think it's reasonable to assume that any advanced civilization would have little need for common resources such as gold and silver. So what other valuable resource can our planet really offer other than a habitable environment and plentiful of so, and a plentiful source of food? I believe that this planet is being colonized by a species of highly advanced alien insects who feed on the blood of humans and animals. The greys are the workers, and whatever creature gives the orders probably remains safely in the hive and has yet to be observed. Were such knowledge to become public, there would be a complete breakdown of society. Therefore, in order to gain time to do the research necessary to find a solution, a climate of social stability is required. This is why maintaining a high level of secrecy is absolutely essential. Consequently, Selected personnel within military intelligence and the CIA have been running a cover-up operation for many years, but how were they able to recognize the threat so much earlier than the present? If the military came into possession of certain evidence, they could have realized everything back in 1947. Consider that the recovery of even one crashed vehicle along with the body would have been sufficient to arrive at all of these conclusions. Although it's unlikely they could reverse engineer a vehicle, a body would have been easy to dissect even in 1947. Assuming they discovered that it was some sort of insect and found traces of human blood in the stomach that would have provided all the necessary insights. Dr. Robert Sarbacher, a physicist attached to the Department of Defense's Office of Scientific Research and Development, headed by Vannevar Bush, stated in two separate 1983 interviews that he understood that the military had recovered an alien craft and several bodies, and he also stated they were constructed like certain insects we have observed on Earth. Following this grim discovery, some attempts were made to shoot UAPs down, but that proved futile. These attempts eventually resulted in a massive UAP overflight of the United States Capitol in 1952. After the military scrambled jets, the UAPs flew off. However, as soon as the jets left the area, the UAPs returned to their position. It was a clear demonstration of air superiority. After that time, a policy of not firing at UAPs was adopted, and the focus shifted to other approaches. Vannevar Bush, who had officially disbanded the Office of Scientific Research and Development in December 1947, five months after Roswell, seems to have become the head of a more highly classified group known as Majestic 12, whose purpose was to investigate the technology and intentions of the aliens. Later, when the arms race heated up in the 1960s, the aliens demonstrated an ability to deactivate our nuclear weapons. It seems they don't want us to blow the planet up now that they have a colony here. If I were to guess, I'd say the hives are located somewhere under the ocean, close enough to allow for convenient feeding while remaining well out of range of human intervention. As the colony grows, the need for blood will increase and the facts will become more difficult to conceal. In addition, more witnesses have been surfacing every day and more journalists jumping on the bandwagon. I believe things like the recent UAP hearings are nothing more than dog and pony shows intended to reassure everyone that all is well while providing virtually no specific information. It's essential to maintain that scenario in order to avoid a massive panic and enable black programs to continue unhindered. The problem is that after having admitted that UAPs do exist and they're probably of alien origin and are operating in our airspace with impunity, it begs the question of what they're doing here. The idea that they're just flying around and nothing else is ludicrous. 
Predators evolved by consuming the flesh and blood of other creatures. We survive that way to a large extent ourselves. We breed livestock to slaughter, but if technology permits, it's more efficient to simply go where food is abundant. The aliens do have that capability, and unfortunately for us, it looks like we're on the menu. My experience. I mentioned that I saw something in 1997. I was living in a rural area in the hills southwest of Tucson. I was awakened one night by the sound of something scraping on my bedroom window like fingernails on a blackboard. I had a dreadful feeling that something very dangerous was trying to get in. But worse than that, I had this bizarre feeling that it was intensely hungry and needed to feed on me. I dismissed these feelings in the heat of the moment because there was no actual evidence yet and grabbed a pump shotgun and ran to the window and flipped on the floodlights. I then saw something that I'll never be able to forget. It apparently was a tall gray. It stood about seven feet in height with a relatively short and thin torso, a very large head and very long legs and arms with three fingers on each hand. It was moving away from the house, so I only saw it from the back, but the way it moved was incredible. The legs took long strides while the body and head remained perfectly upright and just glided smoothly along. When it reached the fence, which was about four feet high, it simply went right over it without breaking stride like a hurdle jumper in the Olympics. It ran into a clearing about 200 yards away, at which point a craft of some sort rose silently up and drifted away to the south. Seen edge on, I couldn't tell if it was circular or triangular but the bottom was radiating a yellow-orange light. Just a few seconds after it flew away, two Air Force A-10s came in from the west, very low, and vectored north directly over my house. I've never seen A-10s fly that low, especially after dark. I thought perhaps it knew I had a shotgun and was scared off, but in retrospect, I doubt that was the reason. I suspect it had some way of knowing the A-10s were approaching, so it decided to leave the area before they arrived. I think if it wasn't for those A-10s, I might not be here today. Because of my need for employment and obtaining clearances, I didn't report this event to anyone. There was, however, another witness to the UAP. A young man who I had met a few times was vacationing in a small trailer just to the south of my house. I met him the next day and he reported the UAP to me without any prompting. He gave exactly the correct time and said he saw it at a very low altitude. It was an unambiguous and very disturbing confirmation of the event. A few days later, I stopped at a small cafe down the road and inquired about the young man. I was told he had stopped for coffee with his trailer hitched up and seemed very agitated. He said he was getting out of here as fast as he could, and I certainly don't blame him. In addition to that, I also found scratches in the glass of my bedroom window and some large footprints which appeared to have three toes. This had a profound effect on me, including repeated nightmares, boarding up my windows, and eventually abandoning the house entirely. Some people might think this experience colored my judgment, but I am afraid that's not the case. After more than 20 years of examining everything I could find on the subject, it all seems to point in the same direction. And rather than being a mere anomaly, my own experience only serves to support the conclusion that our planet is being colonized by a species of alien parasites that feed on human and animal blood. Further thoughts. Psychotronic warfare goes beyond mere paralysis. It involves the altering of consciousness to make potential victims more passive and unsuspecting. In the case of the Phoenix Lights, each person who saw the triangle seemed to be psychologically altered and had the conviction that the aliens were here to help us. In another case, Stephen Greer clearly experienced a dramatic personality change following an encounter, and he now leads groups of people into remote areas where they also have similar encounters and return psychologically altered. The aliens definitely gather and make use of intel. The 1952 air superiority demonstration above the United States Capitol building being an obvious example. For this reason, it is, it is essential that the development of advanced weapons and countermeasures must occur at locations which are completely unknown to any person not directly involved, including elected officials and bulk of the military. It should be assumed that well-known research facilities are not secure. 
It is essential that the production of high-tech components occur within the United States. Purchasing such items from China is not wise. In the event of an active military conflict with the aliens, the Chinese will wish to retain these components for their own use, and we will not be able to restore production very quickly, if at all. Luis Elizondo cited five observables. I believe there is yet another. It has been noted that one craft can separate into two or smaller units, which can act independently. Orbs as small as a basketball can merge with others to form into a much larger craft. This implies the use of nanotechnology, which makes it very difficult to completely destroy them in a single action, and also provides them with the ability to penetrate small or confined spaces. Advanced research, research should focus on direct energy weapons, psychotronic blocking and shielding, robotics, and artificial intelligence, and the development of hyper-deadly neurotoxins. In the event of direct confrontation, the aliens may seek to neutralize world governments while leaving intact the bulk of the population on which they feed. The merit of the robotic warriors is that they can take action autonomous, autonomously without further human direction. Ultimately, robotics and AI may constitute a natural evolution of the human race. When I worked for DARPA, one of the engineers referred to the robots as our children. It took me a while to wrap my head around it, but I came to see the light. The robots will be stronger and smarter and better in every way. And if we can't defeat the aliens in open battle, once the majority of the human population has been replaced by robots, their source of food will have dried up and they'll be forced to go elsewhere for more. And that's it. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, this sounds, you know, this the fact that, uh, you know, we still don't have any answers from the government. This might be the reason, you know, and this this the reason that they can't talk about it is because think about it. I mean, if they're here to feed on us, then, you know, that will cause a panic. There'll be a lot of people aren't going to be able to deal with that information, uh, you know, and. These things are insect-like. I mean, people who've seen them, people who've been abducted, say they reminded them of insects, you know. And insects, as we know, they feed on blood, a lot of them, right? The praying mantis, for instance, you know, all kinds of bugs, fleas, you know, blood. They drink blood. And if they're intelligent, I mean, yeah, just it just kind of makes sense. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, in... Uh, in David Jacobs, you know, he, he wrote a book called The Threat where we basically it was, you know, he came to the conclusion after, you know, hypnotizing, uh, putting a lot of people, uh, alien abductees under hypnotic regression and then, you know, culling as much information from these people under hypnosis as possible. And he came to the conclusion that there, that there's, there's these alien beings and there's a hierarchy. There's these, the short grades and there's these taller grades. And then there's these praying mantis type uh, beings that are in charge standing in the in the corner in, in the shadows of the, a lot of these abductions you know basically you know barking out orders apparently um and is that what's happening here is that what's is that like in his book the threat he doesn't know he said the, the, the threat in the threat he said that the, that it was there was going to be a takeover that the that these aliens he came to the conclusion that these aliens at some point soon and this was back in the 90s when this book came out but he came to the conclusion that that the aliens at some point soon were going to have a takeover they were, they were going to just take control of the planet and is that how they're doing it i mean i, I mean basically they're they're uh, modifying some of their own by using our dna so they're better suited for our planet and uh, and then once they achieve that goal, right? And then the sky is a limit for them, and they can just take over the planet, and 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 we're just food, and as long along with the cows, and maybe we're our food right now. I mean, I've I've read some different reports over the years where there were actual there were carcasses, uh, uh, corpses of of humans uh, that were you know had the same kind of uh, you know the the same kind of uh, mutilation as a cow they're mutilated the same same way with their eyes taken out in fact there was a case in pennsylvania sometime during the 2000s that i tried to get some information about but it just seems like it's it's covered up to the point where you just can't talk to anybody um 
So, well, and maybe for the most part, maybe what happens is maybe that's a lot of people who disappear. Maybe that that's what's going on with them, and then their bodies are just dumped in the ocean. You know, if they start dumping them around in, in, in pastures like they do with cows, then there people would really be questioning. So they they know better to hey, we'll just we'll just take these along with us and dump them in the ocean. Then, is that what's going on? Is that what's happening? You know, and and actually, you know, it, it makes sense. This 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 actually makes the cover up make more sense now i mean uh most of the time i always say it's probably because of the the military implications yeah there's military implications but not in the way i thought you know i i, I would say well you know and, and a lot of other ufo researchers like stanton friedman the late stanton friedman would would say like the, the, you know the biggest deal is whoever comes up with with uh, this technology first will rule the world well maybe that's not really the reason maybe the the government has suspected since the late 40s that uh, these insects are here to conquer us and and basically feed on us, you know. Like we, maybe we're not that special. Maybe there's you know a lot of scientists say there's you know billions and billions of other planets in the universe that have life on them. We're just we're just one other one, and and, and this uh, advanced race found us right and is going to use and, and is going to colonize this planet and basically uh, use us as food. I know it sounds insane but this makes sense this 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 person i can't again i can't reveal the name this person makes a lot of sense you know this makes sense for the, this this explains a lot is it true could be actually this sounds this 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 scenario sounds more believable than anything else actually when you really think about it, I was actually, when I, after I read this, it took me last night after I read it, I, I contacted this person back and forth a little bit in some other messages. And, uh, but I read it again and I, and, uh, I was sickened by it. My stomach was upset over it because it seemed like this could be it. This, this could be the reason this is, this is why they're here. You know, they're, they're here to, you know, this is why there's been a cover up for all these years because they can't, you know, if this was to come out, a lot of people would be upset now. Well, it is coming out. I mean, people, at least, at least it's coming out as a possibility. You know, it's not like I'm not some government official saying this is what's happening. Right. I don't know for a fact, but it sounds like it could be it. It sounds like this could be the reason. And, uh, it makes a lot of sense. It explains a lot of different things. It, it it puts it seems like a lot of different puzzle pieces start falling into place, and it's like yeah, yeah. You know, you know a lot of people. I I you know there's all kinds of reasonings why you know people say people said before. I mean I've heard before that maybe they're using the cows for food. But this actually this 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 fills in the blanks. This fills in the blanks, and it's a it's a very frightening very frightening prospect um you know and and the, I, I just was talking about the robert sarbacher comments in a different podcast i mean that guy yeah that's what he said he's he, you know in the, in the 80s when he was contacted he said yeah there, we, i knew like he said it as a matter of fact yeah these things are are insects you know and insects as we know a lot of them you know feed on blood mosquitoes all the time you know Especially right now in the summertime, they're all over the place, and maybe that's why they're here and they're just setting things up. And the fact that they're, we were talking about them flying in and out of the ocean, right? We, you know, that's why I, I, I assumed, you know, a lot of us assumed that that's where some of their bases are probably situated, because we wouldn't be able to find them. And this, this explains everything. This whole theory that is presented, it's it explains it all, and. Uh, it's something if it's true it's something to be uh scared about i guess because uh it's not something to be happy about um i don't know it's just it's mind-boggling and it's scary and i think uh it gives us something to think about 